This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, I'm Sabrina Brown. Thank you for joining us. Topping the news tonight, a working committee has been formed to chart the way ahead for the development of a museum on Grand Bahama. This facility will complement the education system and will bring an added boost to the island's tourism product. Megan Shepard has the story. For 50 years now, the Shannon Clubhouse has sat atop the hill near the Garden of the Groves. And for 29 of those years, the building has been closed and incurring damage. But on Wednesday morning, chairperson of the now working committee of the Museum of Grand Bahama, Erica Gates, announcing that the building will serve a new purpose. She says the idea has been in the works for over a decade, and now, thanks to Sir Jack Hayward, the building has been made available for a museum. It seems a perfect location due to its proximity to the Garden of the Groves, where we already have a, an existing visitor flow from uh, hotel guests as well as cruise ship passengers. As a matter of fact, this building behind me, which was constructed in the early 70s and was closed down 29 years ago, is part of Grand Bahamas history itself. Kate says that this restoration is wonderful news for the island of Grand Bahama, as it will provide an added attraction for tourists and residents, as well as an educational tool for schools. It will become an additional attraction for visitors and residents as well as an educational tool for the schools on the island, the school children. Here, the colorful history of our island will come alive, ranging from the Lucayan era to the early settlers, emancipation, rum running, sponging, and many other aspects of Grand Bahama life. Uh, way down, of course, or way up, I should say, to the modern development of the city of Freeport. Now, President and CEO of the Grand Bahama Development Company Limited, Graham Tarot, says they are still in the assessment phase of the project and a time frame has not yet been established, but there is some good news for the museum committee. The building is not in good condition at the moment. Um, it needs some serious refurbishment, but the good news is that the building is structurally sound. There are no defects that can't be fixed relatively easily. So at the moment we're going through the process of doing a detailed analysis of the structural side of the building, uh, planning how the interior of the museum will be structured so that everything flows from one era to another. So we're doing all of the interior design work at the same time as analysing the structure of the building. And hopefully within the next six to eight weeks that process will be completed and we will award the first contract which will be to complete the structural work um, of the building. Gates says committee members are expected to have their first meeting in the week ahead. Megan Shepard, ZNS Network News. The stage is being set on Grand Bahama for a youth explosion and a local organization is joining forces with international groups to make it a success. Joan Davis Roll has the details. A major event that will not only assemble the youth of the Bahamas, but the United States as well, is coming to Grand Bahama, and planning sessions are underway for this mammoth undertaking that is expected to provide a major economic boost for this island. Good news for Grand Bahama. Uh, we're excited to launch first the Bahamas Global Youth Festival, a.k.a. Biggie Fest, in Freeport, Grand Bahama, April the 8th to the 10th. 2015. Uh, we are excited to let the young people of Grand Bahama know that it's all, it's all good. And we are been in our planning meetings, we've been doing site visits, uh, we are checking on mission uh, sites, uh, adventures and tours uh, where we can explore Grand Bahama. The brainchild behind this event says he's excited about what is about to take place here on Grand Bahama. We cannot afford to underestimate the value of the youth impact on any economy. Uh, one of the challenges we have here is there has been some 30 percent uh, unemployment rate among young people under the age of 25. And so uh, we are here to bring in the gospel uh, from true to gospel persons who have global influence. We have a gentleman who wants to come here from India who is a senior software engineer. 
he wants to come here and inspire young people on innovation, entrepreneurship. We have a young lady, a professor uh, in, in Tennessee, wants to talk about entrepreneurship and how young people can be inspired so that we can create more entrepreneurial streams and employment opportunity. Partners from the United States stated that as a result of this upcoming event, the island of Grand Bahama will be a hub to not only impact this country, but the world. We're excited about partners, partnering with uh, Clinton Minutes Global in the Biggie Fest. Uh, this is not my first time here. Uh, Bahamas is home for me. Um, Biggie Fest, I'm excited about just coming back. Uh, I was here in 2005, did a conference. We brought in youth from the U.S., about 2,500 youth, over to Grand Bahama. Uh, I think we were at the Royal Oasis at the time in a hotel connected to it. Uh, the kids got excited from the U.S. about uh, uh, the thrill of being here, the excitement of being in Bahama, the junk canoe, all that it brings to the table. And so we excited to come back and give back. If you come. Not only would you be impacted by the spiritual people and who God really is, but you'll begin to start your own career. It's going to show you how to live in this economy of trying time. It's more like practical help. You know, um, I was listening when we was talking in the meeting. I don't know if Clinton going to get me. But we have this thing that he called just before lunch. I told him it's just physical medicine and the prescription is laughter. So we want the young people to come and enjoy Christ. Joan Davis Roll, ZNS Network News. In other news, police arresting two young men overnight on separate charges. A 29-year-old Freeport man was arrested for possession of an unlicensed firearm and ammunition. Police tell us that officers acting on information stopped a white Nissan vehicle in the Hepburn Town area and conducted a search of the vehicle where officers discovered a black .40 pistol containing 9.40 rounds of ammunition. He was arrested and taken into custody. Then around 11 o'clock last night, another 29-year-old man of Freeport was arrested for possession of dangerous drugs. Reports say officers of the mobile unit were in the area of East Sunrise and Baleo Road when they arrested the man for possession of 45 Ziploc packages containing suspected marijuana. Investigations are continuing. Members of the Royal Bahamas Police Force Western District attending a special worship service this past Sunday. Officers of the Royal Bahamas Police Force paused to give God thanks for allowing them to serve the community another year during a service of thanksgiving at St. Peter's Baptist Church in West End. Pastor Larry Wilshkam admonishing the law enforcement personnel to always be grateful in spite of the challenges they may face. We always find that it's easy to thank God when everything is going good. It is not so easy to thank God when everything appears to be going wrong. For many of us, it is hard to be thankful. Yet the Bible clearly teaches us that we are to be thankful for even in the bad time we may go through. Pastor Walshkam added that we take so much for granted when God has been so good to us. Like the praise and worship leader said, no one came in here in no wheelchair today. Amen? And I'm quite sure most of you are healthy today. And we need to give God thanks. When we get up in the morning, we need to give God thanks. Before we go to bed, we need to give God thanks. I know you officers, before you um, do anything, you have to report the death. You should be giving God thanks. The minute you open your eye. The religious leader called on the officers to give their lives to the Lord before it's too late. Don't wait for the last minute. We are not sure what's going to happen to us. We can walk out of this door right now and just fall out right there. And that's it. Amen? You might say, some of you might say, well, he's talking foolishness. But it's going to happen. Amen? Nobody knows where that is. And it's a must. We're going to die. And after, there will be the judgment. There's more news after this. Bringing news that matters to you. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. A local organization exploring innovative ways as they try to foster positive youth development. They are encouraging youngsters to follow their dreams.
Founder of Family Youth Empowerment Mentorship Organization, Pastor Wayne Carey is focused on helping young people with swag, that students with a goal. During a recent forum, a group of high school students and other young professionals gathered to learn more about the significance of finding their purpose and pursuing their goals. I think it's a beneficial seminar because I want to be a cardiologist and it can help to prompt me into things that I need to do in order to fulfill my goal. Guest speaker Fenric Russell believes it's important to encourage young people so that they will be motivated to live their dreams. My position here this morning is simply to help people get fired up. No matter which position you are in life, we're all students. So students with a goal is not just for the youngsters you might see behind me, but for everybody. I believe that we all have goals and we all have purpose and we all have a mission and goals are almost like the vehicles that help you to get there. So I'm about to help you to get fired up about getting inside that vehicle and getting to where you need to go. Coordinator Pastor Wayne Carey is pursuing his passion to help young people decide their course in life. Our intentions is really to, to reach um, as much focused kids as possible and, and propel them for their future. And, and, and so basically, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited in terms of what's, what's going on here today. Uh, the kids are excited about information that's going to be able to transform their lives. One of the leading businesses on the island is bringing joy to many organizations here on the island this Christmas season. AML Foods is also making a big donation to the audiovisual section of the Sir Charles Hayward Library. Executive Director Geneva Rutherford says the donation is greatly appreciated as this area helps with presentations for the various schools on the island. We know that you've been a dedicated supporter of the community for over 50 years. And um, we would like to aid in the support of the community with young and old alike. Well, Direct, Executive Director Geneva Rutherford says the donation is greatly appreciated as this area helps with presentations for the various schools on the island. We are just really grateful that this now allows us to accommodate the needs of the various lectures, mm -hmm. um, also for research purposes because the, what you are giving us is a smart TV and we can get all of the various um, YouTube, the research, what that needs to be done, because as you know, students, College of the Bahamas students, high school students, primary level students, summer campers, they all come into the library. And we have um, various groups that come in for research purposes. So this is going to be just an excellent addition to what we um, need to have in order to accommodate the needs of the public. A global organization is making major strides in the country. Celebrating Women International honored 24 women throughout Grand Bahama who have made a valuable contribution to society. The organization aims to mobilize and inspire women across the globe to make positive contributions. A service of Thanksgiving and awards presentation was held recently at the Church of Ascension. Assistant Curate from Christ the King, Alvardo Adderley, encouraged all honorees to continue to be great leaders. Well, we think that this is one of the first time in the Bahamas at least here in Grand Bahama, that um, they are being considered in this magnitude in the Christian faith. And so we are pleased to make this our first annual event. Of course, others will follow. We feel that these women are of inestimable worth as we think of the contributions they continue to make as they support us, men of God. Many of these women go beyond the call of duty on so many occasions. They are our greatest encouragers, our supporters, our motivation, the wind beneath our wings. And we do apologize, those were not the correct inserts. A memorial service is currently underway at the National Stadium in New Providence in honor of Dr. Miles and Ruth Ann Monroe. They were two of the victims killed in the November 9th plane crash here on Grand Bahama. The memorial will be, include a number of tributes and musical performances. As Italia Hall tells us, one of the groups will be from Grand Bahama. 
choir has been given one of their biggest opportunities. The group was invited to perform at the funeral and memorial service for prominent religious leader Dr. Miles and his wife Ruth Ann Monroe. Director Kevin Tomlinson says it's a privilege to have been selected as the choir holds a special memory of the fallen leader. Dr. Monroe has um, um, personally taken a liking to the choir and he um, had us down for his conference this year um, and after experiencing the choir last year at his conference and then um, while we were in Nassau in July we got a chance to really, he's, I mean he spent a lot of time with each member of the choir um, persons who looked on Facebook pages would see the kids with their dark shades on and Dr. Munro with his shades on you know they took a lot of cool selfies and for this um, this will go down in these kids' memory for a very long time. And so, you know, I'm not surprised that we were asked to come to Nassau and to participate because Dr. Munro had a great love for this program and, um, the, and he appreciated the work that we did. During the choir's practice session, members sang one of Dr. Miles Monroe's popular songs as they reflected on the legacy that he has left to the world. Members of the choir say Dr. Miles Monroe has impacted their lives. Well, when we first met Mr. Monroe, it was just an automatic connection. He was very down to earth, passionate, caring. I mean, we spent about 45 minutes just taking selfies, talking about what you want to do when you grow up. His words inspired me to do great things and to live a life with purpose. Like, you know, as he said, the worst thing in life is not death itself, it's a life without purpose. He was a really down-to-earth person. He was really one of us in a sense, you know. He was a funny guy. Living in the Bahamas, it shows that you can go beyond what people think you can do. You can write books, make movies, whatever, you, whatever your preference is. It shows that the Bahamas is not the furthest you can go. You can, people can know your name, South Africa, America, Europe, wherever. It just shows that the Bahamas is not the limit. There's no limit to what you can do. The group will travel to the nation's capital today to perform. Italia Hall, Sedanes Network News. And remember to check out the West Grand Bahama District and the 8 Mile Rock Boxing Day Committee's Junkanoo Rush Out at Sunset Village in 8 Mile Rock, December 25th and 26th. Stay with us, sports is up next with Ricardo Lightborn. Okay, everybody, it's sports time. I'm Ricardo Lightborn, and sports center dedicated to Eugene Lowe. He's a good man, but he's a Dolphin. Eugene, it's time for you to jump off that ship before week 16, okay? Let's get right to it, folks. Freeport Gospel Chapel Eagles won the 2014 James Goon Comer Keith Mullings Primary School Basketball title. Well, the Eagles took their victory celebration west of the creek down to the West End. Who went with them? Kimberly Mullings. The group of excited boys was whisked off to West End in Style Friday, enjoying X-Men United along the drive. When they arrived at Old Bahama Bay, the team was greeted by GB Basketball Hall of Famer himself, James Goon Culmer, and received brand new Spalding basketballs. Both Culmer and wife of the late Keith Sevenfooter Mullings agreed that it's important to invest in others and to give back. When I was a young man, I met Keith, your dad, and he, you know, the way he played the game, right, he was quiet, honest to the game, he played it professionally, not only played the game, the way he was as a man. I mean, you know, I saw somebody who um, truly was inspiring to me, all right, and I, you know, him, Charlie, and a couple other guys who um, did so much for the game, truly what inspired me to just keep doing something. When you invest in children, uh, they grow up, especially boys, grow up to become young men and contribute to our society as well. As they continue to play basketball, they would remember 
um, Mr. Culmer and um, Keith as well. And this is how you live on. After enjoying their private property tour, they couldn't wait to eat. Lunch was at Teaser's. Principal Raquel Aubrey says this group of hardworking boys played with a purpose this year, and she's glad they came on on top. Third-year coach Gregory Monroe says this is a major first win for the team, and he couldn't pick a better set of players to enjoy the big moment with. The name of this basketball tournament this year is the Jimmy Culmer Keith Mullings Basketball Tournament, and Keith Mullings is closely affiliated with Freeport Gospel Chapel School as well as Freeport Gospel Chapel Church. So just to win this championship that bears his name really did our hearts glad. The boys were able to minister to him last year and because he's not here we did this in his honor and the boys said that and they did live up to what they said they would do. It's a very very big win. As a matter of fact the game is a tough one. You know it was back and forth the whole time but the boys actually came over to win and we are extremely happy. On behalf of Freeport Gospel Chapel School we want to thank Mr. Jimmy Coma and Ms. Mullings for the MVP and Eagles team captain Brent and Brent added that they enjoyed being treated for the day. I feel good, but we tried our best. We went too close last year. We did it our best, and we went too hard as we could. It was fun. We did our best. The, the gym was the intense, and we, we was a little scared at first. The crowd motivated us. Kimberly Mullings, ZNS Total Sports. Hey, congratulations to our little kids for doing such a good job. It's great to have those guys out there. And I got to say to my good friend Eugene, Eugene, please, not no more dolphin jokes, okay? All right, that's it for sports. Tonight. <laughs>